Hello and welcome to Chabot's News for Wednesday, April 10, 2019. My name is Michael Leonor and in today's news we will be covering the Violence Against Women's Act and what's going on with this year's tax refunds. In entertainment news, Brenda Guninas will talk about Nipsey Hussle and the final season of Game of Thrones. In sports, Senyel Glover will cover Olympian Adeline Gray, and in our top five, Ronaldo Severio will tell us the top five wrestlers. All that and more coming up on Shabot News. The House voted to reauthorize a 25-year-old law that helps victims of domestic and sexual violence. Republicans contended Democrats are politicizing the popular law by expanding gun control. The bill will bill to uh, reauthorize the Violence Against Women Act includes a provision making it easier to take guns away from violent offenders, even if they are not a spouse or domestic partner. The amendment closes the so-called boyfriend loophole by barring those convicted of abusing, assaulting, or stalking a current or former dating partner. From owning a firearm, supporters say the measure was crucial to protecting women in the United States who die from gun violence at rates far higher than other high-income countries. The analysts say this year's lower tax refunds are why we've seen a large drop in retail spending this first quarter. J.P. Morgan Chase founded that last year's the median families refunded amounted to more than three weeks pay. Financial Group's UBS uh, says their initial tax refund estimates this season was uh, optimistic by a whopping $25 billion. The smaller refund comes at an awkward time, just as an inco in income is cooling off from last year's tax cut fueled spending jump. The smaller number of tax refunds this year is showing up in another way. Lower retail spending, retail sales dropped from January to February, surprising economists who had expected a modest rise like past years. In fact, February's retail sales were half a percent below January's. So far this year, the Treasury has issued $4.4 billion less in tax refunds than the time last year. According to the latest IRS data, the lower refunds means less spending money. And now, let's go over to Brenda Goninas to find out about the latest entertainment news. Thank you, Michael. It's been a little over a week and many are still mourning over LA's own Nipsey Hussle. Many people are still trying to accept that the rapper is no longer here with us. Over the weekend, mumble rapper Kodak Black hopped on Instagram Live and started talking about Nipsey's now widowed wife, Lauren London and was making really insensitive comments about the situation of her husband being gone. When the video got around on social media, friends and family of Hustle stepped in and confronted Kodak on his rude and childish comments all over social media. Famous LA radio station Power 106 was not with the corny rapper's comments. Power 106's DJ, Justin Credible, tweeted, We stand with the family of Nipsey Hustle and are appalled by the disrespe disrespectful comments made by Kodak Black. With that, Power 106 will not support Kodak Black's music. Safe to say, Kodak Black's career may be over soon. As the days go on, Nipsey Hussle's music and the legacy he left behind will continue to shine, and as many say, the marathon will continue. Rest in peace, Nipsey Hussle. Spring is coming. Well, in this case, winter is coming. The hit show Game of Thrones is gearing up to premiere the final season of HBO's smash hit this Sunday, April 14th. For the final season, HBO is setting a dark and dismal tone for the battle between the people of Westeros and White Walkers. The latest teaser also suggests the Night King will win out in the end. One thing for sure is nothing in season 8 seems predictable. I'm sad to say the final season will only air 6 episodes, but fans shouldn't be too disappointed. The episodes will run longer than the normal hour that all the past season's episodes had. Sadly, the total runtime for all six final episodes together will only be over a little bit of seven hours long, which we're, we're hoping is enough to cram all the action in. From the, beef com from the brief commercials, it's been said that season eight will not be a happy ending. I guess we'll have to wait to see what happens. Now back to Michael for local news. On April 3rd, 70 people were arrested in the tend Tenderloin District of San Francisco in what police are called a uh, quote, fugitive recovery operation. 
in which people named in the in arrest warrants were the main targets. 50 of the, pe 50 of the 70 people were wanted on outstanding warrants. These warrants were issued for a wide variety of sp suspected charges, from some from San Francisco and some as far as San Bernardino County. Others were taken into custody for parlay or pro Pro prohibition violations. 67 of the 70 people arrested were booked into the San Francisco County Jail. The other three were admitted to local hospitals for medical care. San Francisco Tenderloin Station officers led the operation. Assisted by San Francisco Sheriff's Dep deputies, officers from San Francisco's Southern Station and San Francisco's California Department of Corrections parolee agents. No officers or suspects were injured, police said. The sweep was the latest in an ongoing effort led by the Tenderloin Station officers to reduce crime in that district, police said. One man was injured and another arrested following an assault on a BART train at the Daly City Station. A BART spokeswoman uh, said Saturday night the inc that the incident was reported about 8.30 p.m. when two men got into an altercation, said BART spokeswoman Cheryl Stalter. One man was treated for a non-life-threatening injury, S Stalter said, and the other was arrested, arrested BART arrested. BART closed its daily, station, daily city station for approximately 8.15 p.m. until 8.45 p.m. Saturday, as police investigated the assault trains, uh, resumed making regular stops there. Stalter said no other information was immediately available as of Saturday night. BART, police were still investigating. Remember to always be aware of your surroundings and people who exhibit strange behavior on public transportation. And now we go to top five with uh, our, our own Ron Silverio. Thanks, Michael. WrestleMania 35 was just done. And now for this top five, we're going to be throwing it back and ranking the top biggest wrestlers of all time from WWE. Number five, Hulk Hogan, as also known as Hulkamania, was at his prime during the 1980s, as millions loved that he bought in the real-life superhero-like persona of the Marvel's Incredible Hulk. Since a scandal in 2017, he's been barred by WWE, but since has been welcomed back by WWE in 2018, and recently hosted w WrestleMania 35 with superstar Alexa Bliss. He's generated more revenue than anyone in the wrestling business, and is one of the biggest stars the industry has ever known. Number four, The Undertaker. He's a semi-retired professional wrestler currently signed to WWE, where he has worked since 1990, making him the company's longest tenured in-ring performer. The Undertaker also holds the longest streak of WrestleMania wins since his debut, having, only, having won 23 matches. However, Brock Lesnar broke his streak at WrestleMania 30, and he has since also lost to rest, uh, superstar Roman Reigns and WrestleMania 34. Number three, Stone Cold Steve Austin. When you think of iconic wrestlers, you think of Mr. Stone Cold. He was known as a disrespectful, beer-drinking anti-hero who routinely defined, defied the establishment and his boss, company chairman, Vince McMahon. He has also developed the long-standing what chant in pro wrestling. He has also played a big factor in boosting ratings, and some argue that he was a bigger star than Hulk Hogan. He was forced to retire from in-ring competition in 2003 due to a series of knee injuries and a serious neck injury. Since then, he's been inducted into the WWE Hall of Fame and makes regular appearances at WrestleManias. Number two, John Cena. His character was known as an arrogant rapper type. His catchphrase, you can't see me, has been iconic in the industry and in real life. Cena has also credited as being the face of WWE, including the Monday Night Raw and Tuesday Night SmackDown Live. Cena, since wrestling, Cena has also pursued his talents in music and film. He is also granted the most wishes in Make a Wish history. And finally, at number one, you might have guessed it, but it was a must to grant the top spot to the one and only Dwayne The Rock Johnson. Although he's only wrestled professionally for seven years, he's, The Rock is one of the biggest names to ever enter a wrestling ring. The most electrifying man in sports entertainment lit up the wrestling world and for forever be a household name. If you don't know him from WWE, you definitely know him now due to his highly successful acting career and films. Like he said, do you smell what The Rock is cooking? Now it's back to you, Michael. 
Thanks, Ron Waldo. Ladies and gentlemen, the San Francisco Museum of Ice Cream is opening a cafe and bar inside the museum. The SF Chronicle said the cafe will be known as Cafe 1906C for the color code of the museum, <laughs> museum signature shade of pink. The San Francisco Chronicle spoke to the co-founder, Manish Vora thinks it is critical for the business future working with chef Duki Hong, Duke Hong of Sunday Bird Korean Cuisine to make up the menu, saving coffee from Andy Town Coffee as well as some of the French fries, donuts, and the list will be coming soon. As for the adults only bar, the San Francisco Chronicle said that the name is a play on drive-in and will be instead be a drive-in. Ex expect the menu to have beer and wine based cocktails with a lot of glitter, a lot of ice cream and a lot of sweet surprises. Both already built the dive-in is only waiting for the approval of the neighborhood. If all goes well, it will open this summer. That means my mates and I will be having a little trip to the SF Museum of Ice Cream very soon this year. We sent our reporter, Chris Reynolds, around campus to get some students' opinions on the weather. Let's check it out. For our MOS this week, we're speaking with the students of Chabot College of Hayward, California to get their views on the latest weather trends. Once again, Rachel, um, do you enjoy the weather we're having here at Pasco Day? Yeah, I am. A lot. <laughs> I know, of course, this is a, a rhetorical question. Which do you like better, uh, sun or rain? <laughs> of course, the sun. Okay, yes, yeah, so we're definitely, we're, we're not going to have a drought this year. That's <laughs> definite. But these past couple of nights have been really f disturbingly cold. Whoa. And the days have been sunny but windy. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I mean, I don't really go out at night on school nights. You know, I'm like, usually studying. Um, but I, when I come out during the day, you know, you get a dress like when it's like a little warmer, you know, no more layering, a whole bunch of coats, so it's nice. <laughs> Do you like our uh, sunny weather we're having the past couple of days? Yeah. Which you like better, rain or sun? Sun. Well, I like the sunny weather. The, uh, the, it has been raining over the past several weeks, a little cold. Um, I'm a winter person, so I really like the cold. So uh, I'm hoping that we don't hit like another 107 degree day uh, once summer hits. Now, this, this past week, we've had sunshine. It's been kind of chilly during the day and frigidly cold at night. What do you think about your cold nights? I love cold nights. There's nothing better than just, you know, being able to open the windows and then still staying under a real warm blanket. Well, there we have it from our students at Chabot College. With our MOS, or Man on the Street, this week, speaking with Chabot students, I am Christopher Reynolds. Thank you, Chris. Now we'll take a look at what else is going on at Chabot campuses, or Chabot campus. The Disabled Students Resource Center will be priority registration appointments on April 16th for the next semester. Make sure you schedule your appointments as soon as possible so you don't miss your chance. For more information on making an appointment, contact DSRC at 510-723-6725. Last but not least, you can always apply for their annual scholarships. The deadline to submit is April 26th before noon. Submit online applications only. Refer to Chabot's website and search DSRC for more information. On Tuesday, April 16th, Chabot is hosting a job fair in the cafeteria, located in Event Center, building 700. The event starts at 2 p.m. and will end at 6 p.m. Companies such as Nike, Tesla, and Kindango uh, are just some of the few that will be attending. Be sure to check this out for those of you interested in a part-time or summer job. For more information, information, refer to the Chabot website at www.chabotcollege.edu. And now we go to Roberto Salazaro for this week's live report. Thank you, Michael. I am Tito reporting from Chabot College. Behind me is Stage 1, where that musical called In the Heights will be showcased, put on by Chabot College Theater Department. Now it has a cast of all your Chabot students, local ones, so please go support. I hear that it's a scene in New York City, you know, very nice city. Uh, the plot, was, from what I read, it's about a community in crisis and the crisis of change. And deciding what traditions will move on and live and what traditions will die off. I really hope the pizza doesn't really die off. 
Now, if you want more info on where to get your tickets, just go to Shabuk College's homepage, search in In the Heights, and get your tickets. It runs all the way through the end of April of this month. I am Tito reporting from Shabuk College. Back to you, Michael. Thanks, Roberto. We have a few upcoming events you might want to check out. Local Love Music Festival, April 20th at Madrid Ranch, 57 Spring Lane, Danville, California. The event starts at 2 p.m. and will end at 8 p.m. Note, there will be no parking provided at the event. It is recommended to use Lit Uber or Lyft. For more information, refer to the event website at danvillesocial.com. TNT Boys World Tour 2019. Tuesday, April 23rd, here at Chabot College. The event starts at 6 p.m. For more information, check out at mytfc.com or you can order tickets on StubHub.com. Oaklash Oak Oak 2019, the Bay Area Drag Festival in Oakland, uh, held at 1255 7th Street. This is a two-day event that will start April 27th and finish April 28th. The event will begin at 10 p.m. both days. For more information, refer to the event website at oaklandash.com. Northern California Ukulele Festival, Sunday, April 28th at James Logan High School. The event starts at 9 a.m. and ends at 5 p.m. For more information, refer to norcalukulelefestival.org. And now we go to Sanyel Glover with the latest update on sports news. After missing the past three world championships for the wrestling, Olympian Adeline Gray returned this year to dominate the competition and earn her fourth world title. The Colorado native took the competition by defending last year's champion Yasmin Adar of Turkey in the final round. Gray made her Olympic debut in the Rio Olympics where she made it all the way to the quarterfinals. With this win, she is now tied for the most world titles among women in the history of the United States. The Penn State Nittany Lions have just won their fourth consecutive national title for the NCAA Wrestling Championships thanks to wrestler Jason Knopf, Bo Nickel, and Anthony Kazar. Jason Knopf made headlines for his revenge match against his rival John Van Brill, where Knopf came out victorious. Bo Nickel took home the Hodge Trophy, barely edging out fellow teammate Jason Knopf. However, it was Anthony Kazar who became the champion of the competition and put the Nitty Lions on top. The seniors have definitely had their perfect ending to their collegiate careers and have a very bright future ahead of them. Now back to you, Michael Lenore. Has, has the week been bringing you down? Well, here's some news that might bring a little smile to your face. Petco has just become the first and only major pet food retailer to remove artificial ingredients in dog and cat foods starting in May 2019. They also launched Cleaning, Ho Cleaning House, a marketing campaign designed to help pet parents reconsider what they feed their pets. Their press release states, if it doesn't meet our new standards, you won't soon find it on Petco shelves. Tarki Hassan, Petco Chief Marketing Officer, also states, quote, Last year, we put the entire pet industry on notice by introducing a new standards for nutrition because we firmly believe it's the right thing to do for pets, end quote. Artificial ingredients include artificial colors, flavors, preservatives, just like we care about what we put into our bodies. We should also care what goes into the bodies of our furry friends. Now, let's go to our adulting topic this week, work-life balance. Thanks, Michael. As an adult and a student in college, it's hard to balance school with work. Nearly four out of five U.S. students have a part-time job, according to a survey by Citigroup and Seventeen Magazine. But how do they do it? How can you do it? We'll find out how for this week's Adulting 101. Time management is very important for students and adults. For me, I put the times of my classes and my job into my schedule. Then I look at the free time I have in between to either study do homework or do anything else that isn't related to school or my job. If you're primarily in school, don't let your job be your focus because you're working in school to get a career, which is better than a small job. I'm a student that works as a receptionist for Trio Student Services, so I was able to interview Janelle Reza, who is one of the special programs counselors. I asked her how one could balance school and work. 
definitely tutoring, right? We have really good tutoring here at Chabot. We have Calm Tutoring. We have the RAC, which does the English and other subjects. We have World Language Labs, which helps you with the foreign languages here. We have the STEM Center, which helps you with the sciences and the math and all the other programs here. So academically, that one you know, is something I always encourage students to do. Get the academic support. Janelle suggested finding a support system. Finding a support system, whether it be academic or emotional, can help you when you're feeling down from the overwhelming stress of school and work. It can be hard to be motivated, but it can be easier if you can get to have something done with your friends or a tutor. Many schools offer student service programs, programs that cater to helping working parents, and tutoring programs that offer free tutoring. If time isn't available to go to tutoring, you can look for online tutoring opportunities, like NetTutor, which offers online tutoring for all subjects 24-7. So remember, look for on-campus job opportunities and find a support system. Those are my tips for this week's Adulting 101. Now back to you in the studio. Thank you, Ron Waldo. That's all for Chabot News this week. Thanks to all the students and staff in the Mass Communications Department here at Chabot College for making this production possible. You can watch us anytime online at youtube.com slash Chabot TV. Stay tuned to KCTH Channel 27 for more Chabot TV.